Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about something that's long awaited for. BAM! The solar charger for the Eagle Power Station. Stay tuned. All right, you guys, so this right here is the Eagle Power Station. And if you're watching this video about the solar charger, you probably know what this is, but just in case you don't, I'll give you a quick overview about what it is. So it's pretty much a power inverter that takes four of the Ego arc lithium batteries and puts out a clean, pure sine wave AC output. So it puts out actually three of those and it's also got like some USB outputs and it has some nice features and stuff. But pretty much what it takes is like your outdoor power equipment batteries and allows you to move with it on the go, camping, whatever, and puts out clean sine wave. It can take up the four batteries. You can either buy it as a bear tool or a kit or all that fun stuff. But I'm assuming you probably know all of that stuff. So one of the, the things that people have been always asking for was, we need a way to charge this via solar so a lot of people can use it either in like a tiny home situation or a camping situation or whatnot. So that if you are going to a place where you don't have AC to charge the batteries, then you want to be able to use the unit in itself to be able to charge the batteries that's going to be on the unit. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to throw out one, one caveat here. So with this power station that they did release, it still will not do pass through charging. Okay. If you don't know what that means, it means you can either have the power station in on mode, right? Or you can either have it in charging mode. You cannot do you cannot have it on while it's charging, okay? You cannot use it while it's charging. That's what pass-through charging really means, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, but Ego has finally released this, okay? So this is pretty much a power brick that usually, if, if, if you already had the power station, it, it really just replaces the AC power brick that goes on to the Ego power station. All right, we'll show you, we'll show you in a bit, okay? So you take the cord that's coming out of your charging unit, your AC charging unit, and you just plug it in directly here, all right? And then you connect your solar panel input there, okay? So the model number on this is CH1800, okay? It comes in this nice little box, Ego Arc Lithium Power Plus 56 volt, okay, industry's most advanced stuff, blah, blah, blah. So it pretty much comes in a box with this, and you get a small manual, and you get this cable, okay? Um, so this is a cable that takes, it looks to me like an XT60 connector, could be an XT40 or whatnot, but it takes, an, we'll put up some pictures, on one side that plugs into the solar charge unit, okay? And then the other side of the cable is MC4 connectors, okay? Um, on this one here, I have, I have a Y splitter or adapter or combiner, depending on which way you, which way you want to look at it. I, this, this does not come with the charging unit, but I did buy it so that I could connect two, um, charging panels pretty much to this input. Okay. I just didn't take this one off, but you can, you can buy these separately. I'll throw a link in, Am in the description. You can pick these up off of Amazon relatively pretty cheap, but this, I'm not sure if this is. Bogue or Boge RV or whatnot, they generally seem to make pretty good solar stuff. Not sponsored any of that, this is just what we ended up picking up, okay? So we'll give you some quick notes on here. It doesn't say anywhere on the internet or on the manuals or anything that I could find if this is an MPP tar charger or not, okay? That we don't know. But the model number is CH1800 and it can take up to 180 watts of solar input, okay? and it needs to be right under 14 volts, okay? So what that really means is you really need to use 12 volt panels and somehow get less than 180 watts, okay? <clears throat> so I, I, have, I have a few panels. I'm probably gonna see if I can make it work with the Renergy panels, the two 100 watt Renergy panels and connect those in parallel and then drop those into the solar charge input, okay? So, I mean, that's what you really get. It's no frills, nothing. It just kind of works, all right? So, we'll unplug that, okay? I had it on to drain a little bit of battery so we can try to figure out how it goes. But in case you don't have it, in case you haven't used it for a while, at the top here is where your AC charging brick goes, okay? Um, so, if you don't have it, what it really does is this power brick, which is black, plugs into the wall, right? And then out comes this DC power here to charge 
the batteries that go on here, okay? So if you have this, you probably already know, it doesn't parallel charge all the batteries, it just goes around one at a time, charging each batteries in, in like an equalized manner so that they pretty much all have the close to the same charge as possible. That's, that's how they work. Um, some people like it, some people don't. But what they've really done here is pretty much copied the design or whatnot, their own design, very similar design, so that you really just put the same power brick exactly where it would go, right? And if you wanted to strap it in, you could take a strap, strap it in, right? And then you take this charging cord that goes into the power station itself, and you plug in your cord, all right? So that way it ends up looking like that. Okay, so you got this thing going on here, goes in here, looks like that. And so the, obviously this one is this gray, the ego gray, the AC one is black. So we'll have to see how much it can really charge or how fast it really works since it is only 180 watts input. I'm not sure what the output of it is really gonna be. We'll have to test that out with our Renergy panels. But you take this in here, plug this in here, right, plug in your panels, charge, okay? So we're gonna take this outside and then we'll plug it in, charge it up, whatnot. It's right around 4 p.m. and this is, um, April, so there's still a lot of sunlight out. Sun's actually set to go down at 8 p.m. So we'll have to see how this goes, but stay tuned. All right, you guys, so I did move it to a better location. Um, like I said, it's a little past four right now. Um, by moving it to a better location with more light, the amps, amperage output on the solar panels, combined output, looks like it went up to about four, hovering around four or five amps output. And the charge time definitely decreased from one hour and 11 minutes or whatever it was before to about 30 minutes. So, it looks like it is working pretty well. Um, do have to watch it to make sure it doesn't over overpower uh, the charge input on the solar charger here. Uh, if I sound like I'm out of breath, it's because I've been running up and down the uh, deck to bring everything upstairs before the sun went down. So roughly around the same amount of sun, just bet and better sunlight or more sun to the panels. Combined output of two of these energy panels was putting out about five amps and the charge time went down about 50 percent if not more okay so it does seem to work pretty well right now we are connected with the ego solar charger connecting on this one battery and it's combined with these two energy panels in parallel okay and it is putting out right around five amps six amps seven in good sunlight it'll it'll move around a little bit but if you're doing it right in the middle of the day where it's really bright and you're getting a lot of sun i'm sure it'll go really fast um, it'll charge fast um, probably at this peak rate but right now i can't i don't have that much sunlight right now a little past four so we do have some sun just not the best so i'm sure if you angled the panels tinkered around with it a little bit and got it in maybe like noon or like one or something like that. It'll definitely work better, but this is what we got for now. All right, you guys, and we're back in the shop. So we were outside for probably about a good two hours or so. And we did a little bit of playing around in different spots and not all of it's probably gonna come out on video, but we did do a lot of messing around to try and tinker with the best combination. We used one panel and then when it was working too well, we combined two panels and a bunch of stuff happened. But anyways, we're back inside. So what did we learn? All right, so we learned that the ego, 
um, solar charger does indeed work, obviously, as you would expect. It does seem like it was a little bit an afterthought. I do think that when the company first designed this or whatnot and put it together, it really wanted to be a power station. It really meant to charge batteries in the house and kind of use it if you're on the go, or like tailgating, camping, whatever. I don't think they designed it to be a standalone unit where you could charge the batteries using solar in here and also do all the other stuff. Why? Mainly because it doesn't have pass-through charging and they released the solar charge unit way afterwards after this was just released okay so solar charge unit was just released and this power station was released probably a couple years ago so it does seem like a little bit after that but it does indeed work um it is probably a good thing to say about the company that they did release something that everybody has been wanting for a long time um and it's really just they added on the capability just by replacing the one ac power brick that does come with it okay so it does work, you barely need it. They get they probably may need the least amount of components you need to get in general to make it work. Meaning, you just get this, you get a cable, but you have to do supply your own power. Pow you do have to supply your own solar panels. I use two RNG 100D-SS panels. I believe they're 100 watt panels, and I think they're 18 volt panels because I think they're like 21.5 or 6 uh, voltage open circuits. I think I'm not sure about that in general, but you can look at it all. I just gave you model numbers, RNG 100D-SS, and those are the panels that I used. So using two of those combined in parallel would put it at about 200 watts peak, but by using those panels previously a lot in other projects and a bunch of other stuff that I did, I know that they'll peak out roughly around 75 to 80 watts max, okay? Uh, just in my experience, because it's almost rare or impossible that you get exact 100% peak performance out of those solar things, so I mean, who knows? But anyways, by using the Bogue or Rode or Bose or I don't know how you say the name, Bogue RV R MC4 splitter combiner thing, we're able to combine two of those in parallel and feed the solar charge controller. Like I said, we did it a little bit closer to five or a little bit past five, so there wasn't the best amount of sun, so we were able to get a peak of about 7.5 amps into the solar charge controller and it did charge or would have charged 40% of one battery from 60% to 100% in roughly about 33 minutes, okay? So it does work with better sunlight, better time of the day, you could probably charge faster and get a bunch of stuff going, but that is what it is, okay? So what did we learn or a few other things to note about? So one thing I did notice is that if when the amperage going into the unit does drop below about 0 0.25, 0 0.26, it does seem to cut off entirely, okay? And then when the sun comes back out from behind the cloud, it does kick on to charge. And one thing that you hear during that time that you probably know if you have one, every time you turn it on, you hear like all the relays and everything kicking on to enable the charging or the the power inverter to really work, okay? So one thing I did notice is that when it does go behind there, it'll turn off when the sun comes out, it'll come back on automatically to charge, right? So. I could see that putting unnecessary wear and tear if, you, if you're if you in an area where the sun's always peaking in and out from behind the clouds or whatnot because it'll go kick on, kick off, kick on, kick off. Seems like a lot of unnecessary wear. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you're gonna be using it in a wide open space where you probably can leave it completely in the sun, you don't have to worry about that, then it will probably be fine. Um, but make sure when you're using it, I would make sure to keep this area, this part in the shade, mainly because you don't want this to get too hot and you don't want to expose the batteries to sun because they will get hot from UV and heat and all that fun stuff, okay? So don't do that. If you can keep this in the shade, obviously it works better. Solar panels have to be in the sun, obvious. So, but they did do what they said they were gonna do. They do have the ability to charge the power station here using just by buying one little component here, right? And then buying your own panels. So that does work. It does actually increase the capabilities of it. The biggest downside, like I mentioned, is it cannot fast charge all batteries in parallel and it cannot do pass-through charging, meaning you can either have the power station in charging mode or you can have the power station in on mode for usage or whatnot. Can't do both. So that's a little bit of a downside. I don't think they're gonna be able to fix that with a, a component update or whatnot. You probably need a hardware redesign or something like that, knowing circuitry in order to allow that to happen, okay? So keep that in mind, but it does work. We got this one from Ecme Tool. We ordered it a couple um, weeks ago actually, and it did come in as soon as it was available and no one sent this to us or whatnot, but this is just our opinion. 
it works if you're in an emergency situation like i don't know hurricane or power outage or something came through it will probably work for you okay you probably have to charge during the day and you could use it at night okay you can't use and charge at the same time okay so make sure you keep that in mind all right so the other thing to note on here was nowhere in the app or nowhere on the panel that's displayed here or any of that stuff will it really tell you how fast it is charging like the voltage and amperage and everything going into the battery what it will tell you is roughly how much is how much time is left until the battery is fully charged so that can be a pro and con if you want everything done easy you just only care about the time if you're a super nerd or geeker and you care about all the details you can't find that i looked over it in the app it doesn't seem to be there and available you can probably figure it out like i put like a amp meter and and the voltage meter and stuff like that trying to figure out the power at least going into the solar charge controller um you could probably figure all that stuff out but i mean it is available or it's not really available so you can't really use it but you can figure it out if you wanted to it does work it has two led lights on the back a red one and a green one and the blink codes and statuses are all in the manual you can look at it if you want but it does work okay so it does have its limitations like i said only 180 watts input but i believe that's probably that's all they really need because it's not like the so the power station could do fast charging anyways right if it did fast charge all, all four batteries then they could probably take afford to take more power input to do that right but the power station only charges each individual visual battery very slowly and equals it out so with that limitation 180 watts is probably all that they needed so we'll do we'll give we will give them the benefit of that on that okay so it does work and what can i say it seems like it's built with general eagle quality it looks like it has a standard three-year warranty so i mean eagle stuff has generally been pretty reliable and generally pretty good so hope this video helped you guys out and i will see you guys next time